My name is Rapsony. Welcome back to Slay the Smile. Woo, the Heartbreaker Chronicles. All right, Defect Ascension 15 time. Now, we're going to have difficulty winning the Ascension 15. And then on top of that, we're also going to have to beat the Hearts. So, how's that going to happen? Well, we can't do a Dark Orb build because, well, or, okay, we can do a Dark Orb build. We cannot do the Dark Orb build that I particularly like to do, which is build up one singular Dark Orb at the very front of the line. Uh, defend, it has a loop on it, so it gets really, really, really big and then multicast until it blows up the enemy. Uh, and we can't do that because we can't deal more than 300 damage in a single turn to the heart. So that's not going to help. Two random colorless cards? I mean, the rest of these options are kind of garbo. Dramatic Entrance and Impatience. Impatience is really good. Actually kind of broader, uh, bordering on broken, but... I'm not going to call it out for that. I'm actually kind of a fan. I say kind of a fan. That's extremely downplaying it. I'm really into it. Oh, impatience is so good. <laughs> it did nothing there, but it's still really good. I'll take a cold snap as a value pick here. 12 cards, all right. Charge battery, I would be really happy to take. Multicast? Hey, I'll be taking that charge battery though. White noise? Ah, dang it. Missed out on the zap as well. Dramatic entrance, impatience time. Alright. Multicast effectively there functioned as a dual cast. Wait a second. Yeah, dual cast is the correct option there. Uh, actually, is it? Now that I have a. Hang on, now that I have a multicast in the deck, is dual cast always correct? Double energy. Ooh. Double energy multicast, though. Uh, the deck would have to be ridiculously thin in order to get both of those in the same hand, but at the same rate, we have an impatience, and neither of them are attacks. I really want to go for the ball lightning, just because I need the ability to get through these next two elites. Yeah, I have to go for the ball lightning. Sorry. <clears throat> All right. Worked out pretty well. I obviously didn't want to do the dramatic entrance first because that would have triggered both of their curl ups, whereas the dual cast did not. Second charge battery. Okay, our energy problems are quickly dissipating. Really sucks that I can't pick up either the Clockwork Souvenir or the Incense Burner here. Those would be really great for us. As much as I kind of want that Streamline, just so that I can get through the upcoming Elite, more than that, I'd really like that Defragment. Does that necessarily mean I can't take the other as well? With this deck, I think it does. Who's our boss this floor? Hexa. Mm. Yeah, they're taking the strength potion as well then. I was looking to drop the card and then go and get my strength potion and play it that turn. You can probably guess how well that one worked out for us. As much as I want to play the defrag, it does very little this turn. Especially because I would be playing charge battery, charge battery as well. I'm not going to evoke for one on the multicast. Multicast would need to be upgraded before I'd play it for that. That's not really going to cut it. Sure, we're not taking as much damage as we possibly could be, but that shouldn't be the guard for what's acceptable. Now that we've got one of the backliner or frontliners down, we are going to be much more defensible. 
hell, we're almost perfectly defended already every turn. Almost. Only need one card. Ugh. Next turn's gonna suck. Getting out another lightning orb is gonna help me kind of pivot towards damage here. All right, look, it's a 50-50, then a 50-50, then a 50-50. It would have to fail all of those. That's a 12.5% chance that the sentry in the back line survives. Yeah, okay. I'm not that unlucky. I'm unlucky. I'm not that unlucky. Dreamcatcher, whenever you rescue your card to your deck, as well as the Emerald Key. Another ball lightning over the cool headed here. Over the vision, I mean. Cool headed actually wasn't even in consideration. Um, chill. Chill is really good. I'd like to take it if I could, but I can't, so I won't. I'm going to veer off to this side. Ah, uh, no. See, I want two upgrades so that I can hit my... Uh, so that I can hit both my defragment and my zap. Do I effectively just concede that I'm not going to get anything from that shop so that I can go to an elite directly after? No, I don't think so. Oh, yes. All right. Upgrades thing on my part. Uh, we'll take the Sapphire Key there. Is that correct? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. Should have been the Blood Vial. Blood Vial is... Eh, all things considered, probably relatively low impact. But I could have gotten a better option to remove later. I guess that's always true. I don't like having to play cards while I have pain up here, but... Uh, I don't have to play that cold snap. I can actually just wait two turns. Regen potion would be really nice if I could take it. I'm definitely taking a leap. I want the regen potion, but more than that, I want the dex potion and the strength potion. Damn limited orb slots. Orm versus Claw. Interesting. This deck could be really powerful with Claws is the thing. So, I'm about to remove the pain wherever I get the opportunity. Defragment removes itself from the deck. Impatience is card draw. Uh, dramatic Entrance removes itself from the deck and an Ascendance does, uh, or rather Ascendance Bane does as well. So, the in-play deck is relatively thin. The reason that I consider Claw here is because I don't have any scaling element in this deck yet. And because Claw is zero cost attack, it doesn't jam up Impatience. In fact, it's excellent to draw with Impatience. You can play out all of your costly attacks, play Impatience, draw into a Claw, and you get another attack. I think I'll take it. I don't want to go for another power stacking build. It's almost literally all I've been doing. Claw has an animation. I... I had to have known that, right? Game. I'm gonna have to play the charge battery that turn because I don't know what's coming next turn. Well, I do know what's coming next turn. A uh, buttload of damage. Fitty fitty. I could have better defended myself that turn, but I didn't want to take as much damage. So I kind of banked on the best possibility there. And in banking on the best possibility, died. Eh, it happens. I figured that I was going to be in a really bad position going up against the Hexa at the end of that floor because I didn't have a scaling element in my deck except for the single claw. 
So I was more willing to take risks. Take risks to see if you can get more powerful earlier. And if you die, well, okay. You were probably going to die later on that anyway. All right. We have a lot of early elites here, so... We're not going to be able to take down any of the early elites with this unless we go on this path. None of these are enemies. And then we get that elite. But one, two, three, four. It's actually a relatively good path. So we'd be looking for like the fastest Sunder, I guess, that we can get. Something like that would be really good. Go for the eyes. It's actually going to be pretty good for weakening. More than happy to remove something. It's going to have to be a defensive removal. Otherwise, we are going to have a lot of difficulty against some of the elites. More than happy to go to this upcoming shop. Just looking for a particularly powerful card. A bunch of cold snaps would get me through these elites as well. Cool. Alright, we're going to have difficulty with this first elite. Definitely. Um, the thing is, uh, the thing about the elite path that I've chosen is I took no damage in any of the combats prior because of the Meow's Lament. Which gave me a lot of opportunity to start building up some cards. Let's take a hologram here. Sadly, I didn't really build up the cards that I wanted, but yeah, that happens. You can't always get what you want, but if you try sometimes, you might just find you get what you need. I actually managed to get Claw upgraded twice, as well as exhaust my Ascender's Bane, as well as get a Zap out here. <sighs> That's actually pretty good. For before the first Lark of All and stuff goes down. really love to have launched another attack in there, but... Oh, that sucks. Getting all the attacks on the wrong turns. And we're good. I'll pull them down. Gambling chip. The start of each combat discard as many cards as you'd like, and then draw that many cards. Cool headed versus Thunderstrike versus Compile Driver. Take another of those. Hologram needs to be upgraded so that it doesn't exhaust. It's effectively a second claw for us right now. That's primarily the, uh, the function that it's serving. Ooh. Getting out that defensive potential early, especially considering how particularly poor next turn promises to be for us. Seems a good idea on my part. Also, we'll be in this fight long enough to use the regen potion. Damn. There was a one-third chance that the lightning hit the front line. Took the front liner down, but... Worst case scenario, I can finish it off myself. And so I did. It's a really good dual cast right there. Awful. Gosh, awful hand right there, unfortunately, though. Well, at least a single strike to the front line will do it. I mean, I could have just passed two turns right there, but Sentry's down, Smiling Mask. Yeah, not enough Lightning Orbs in the party, in the, party, in the deck yet to take a Biased Ignition. We'll take a Rebound so that we can put Claws and other important cards atop our deck. Singing Bowl! When adding cards to your deck, you may gain two max HP instead, as if I'm going to choose the Sapphire Key over my best friend. Ooh, that's a, that's a hand right there. Start building up that claw. 
So I played Claw twice, and now it's better than a strike. Ah, uh, it's... Uh, I, I can't enrage the enemy. I will lose if I enrage the enemy. Ooh, yikes. This early. I will lose if I enrage the enemy this early. Mind. That's... Yeah, that's overall what I meant. Putting another cold snap atop the deck there is really great. Mm. Maximum output of damage this turn is actually doesn't even involve hologram. It's go for the eye, strike, strike, zap. So that's eight, six, six, three. 8663 plus 3. So it's 8666. So that's 1824. Slightly short of lethal, but if I also kick in the hologram, I can actually. Yeah. Oh, I miscounted. I like it when I miscount. See, I always miscount in the direction that makes it bad for me. Like, I always think, oh, I don't have enough damage to do that, rather than I have too much damage to do. Well, not always. But more commonly, I underestimate rather than overestimate. So I'm usually, like, pleasantly surprised. I think a leap is a nice defensive card. I don't want to lose 150 gold. We have a shop in the next space. Lose the energy potion. <laughs> Ornamental fan, every time we play three attacks in a single turn, gain four block. This is definitely a deck where we're going to want to go, like, all the way with the claws. I'm just worried whether or not that's going to be viable. Even I think that word sounds wrong in my accent. Viable. I kind of want to take the Sunder just so that I can dunk on some enemies next floor. It's important to have large burst damage so that you can do things like that because I definitely don't have the defense. But I could also just go hologram card removal. Hologram card removal Sunder? Yeah. Yeah, I'm about that. Unfortunately, I can't go up in this... Uh, can I? I might be able to. I'm definitely going to have to rest in this position, though. really hoping for a better deck. Um, the the fact that at the start, I did not get the effect of the gambling chip is entirely my fault. I uh, I misplayed that. Uh, misplayed. No, I, I did it wrong. I, I just clicked really quickly because I was just impatient. Okay. I'm going to rebound this hologram back to the top of my deck to get the claw. I'm going to use it. Hologram to get the claw. Then I'm going to use it. As much as I want to just drop the Sunder, that's probably just death on my part right there. So instead, I'm going to fully defend. I want to rebound Colds. Like, I want to do all of those kinds of things. But if I don't rebound Claw, I think I just lose this combat, so... gonna be a real real ooh, ooh, ooh. you are kidding me uh we actually get four blocks by paint uh playing the strike because it triggers the ornamental fan all right we got him the boot whenever you would deal four or less unblocked attack damage increase it to five or was another cold snap if the cold snap was up, not up against the skim, I would be more happy to take it. But it is up against the skim. I have a zero cost, uh, uh, two zero cost cards in the deck. Yeah, but two more that upgrade to be zero cost, relatively low cost cards outside of the Sunder. 
I think I have to take the cold snap, otherwise I'm gonna die to this upcoming boss. Speaking of dying to this upcoming boss, we'll try and mitigate that by resting. Sunder next hand. I don't need to use Sunder. I can actually use the hologram to bring back the claw. Then have the lightning orb drop the enemy to the ground. The reason that that's a little bit better to do is just because it's going to increment the claw a little bit more. Leap, rebound, hologram the claw. Again, this is all about getting that claw built up. I need a scaling element in this deck. Claw provides that scaling element. Wanted to set up the frost orbs that turn so that effectively, this is exactly the kind of positioning I wanted to be in where I've just got all of these frost orbs ready to defend me against whatever happens. We definitely overplay our attacks on that turn. Like consistently we've been doing that. Thankfully our claw is starting to get to the point that yeah, it's getting there. It's starting to get to the point that I really needed it to be at. Where it can kind of just help us remove targets from the field. I know it's just one claw, but one claw is sometimes enough. All for one very heavily pushes me towards the claw build. I got to admit. Kind of got it. Uh, <laughs> okay, so all for one. Let's talk about all for one confusion and zero costs. We have a Sunder in the deck. So we have a little bit of a reason to consider the Snekawai. As much as I want energy, it is going to be very difficult to convince me to take the Runic Dome until I entirely understand the attack patterns of the heart, right? The attack patterns of the bosses on the final floor are relatively deterministic. The Time Eater probably has the most randomness in their attack pattern, uh, given to the fact that they have like three or four different options of what they can do. Um, whereas every other character has like two. And Donu and Decker obviously just have the same thing every single time. They're entirely determined. Anyhow, when you draw a card and you have confusion, it randomizes the cost of that card between zero and three. Evenly. 25% chance it costs zero, 25% chance it costs three. If you consider an all for one in that kind of deck, you are saying all for one will draw one quarter of my discard pile on average because the card's value is only reset it's it's uh energy cost is only reset on draw drawing one fourth of your draw pile occasionally inconsistently possibly drawing things that you don't want back Makes it really difficult to consider all for one Snack OI a consistently powerful build. It is too random. Snack OI itself has randomness, yes. But adding all for one on top of that to capitalize on a possible subset of the randomness from Snack OI, I feel, in my opinion and for my playstyle, is relatively short sighted. Maybe if you had a ridiculously thick deck, I could see it but we don't intend to run thick. Runic Dome is going to be really difficult for me to take because of the 
final heart. There is a strong argument to be made that Runic Dome is the best energy relic in the game, that it has the least bad downside. I don't strongly disagree with that. If this was a normal run, uh, like, you know, an A1 kind of like, oh, let's play with some new cards kind of run, or, you know, even all the way up to A15. Um, not Heartbreaker, but A15. I would probably be taking the Runic Dome. Some of you understand where I'm about to go with this. We have a low-cost build already. I'm considering what is considered by most to be the worst relic uh, or rather the worst, worst boss relic. <laughs> Calling Bell. It's not considered by that to be all. It's, it's very, like, all people don't consider it to be the worst. But it is consistently mentioned as the worst when people are asked. Uh, especially in larger forums like Reddit, like the Slay the Spire, Discord, etc, etc. Steam discussion forums. Because I have the ability to remove cards from my deck at 50 cost, and it does not increment the cost of removal, I am considering taking the calling bell here and crossing my fingers and hoping that we high roll our, our relics. Either getting blue candle or uh, Duvu doll or both. Or that next floor we get a lot of early shots. If none of that happens, I fundamentally believe Snegoi will kill me. I also believe that Runic Dome will kill me, but it might keep me alive for a while, but it will kill me in the heart fight. I'm worried that if I don't take Calling Bell, the correct choice... For me and for my playstyle, in my opinion. Let me pepper that in heavily. You can disagree for your own opinion. You can disagree for your own playstyle. You can't disagree for what my opinion is. Because that's what my opinion is. I'm not saying all opinions are equally valid at all. That's not what my argument is. I'm saying that you can't tell me that that's not my opinion. I, I think it's either the calling bell or skip. It's Sneko and Pivot. It's Sneko and Pivot. It's find a shop, try and find a Meteor Storm, find more Sunders, cut the zero cost cards from my deck, Sneko I and Pivot. I mean, sometimes Sneko I works out like this. Gambling Chip is actually making Sneko I a lot better. I hadn't considered that. Was I wrong not to consider that? Yes. Yeah. yeah, it was. Mm-hmm. I'm about to sunder the enemy three times on turn one. Auto shields is great defense, so Claw obviously fits into this build. I can't take any of them because of Sneko Eye. <laughs> if Claw costs one, it's un well, not unplayable, it's quote unquote unplayable. Uh, right up until it is better than a strike. If it costs two, it's probably just unplayable. If it costs three, you're laughing. I'm going to take the max HP. Upgrade a card on Sunder. The other upgrade's going to be on Thwack. No, I, 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 I just have to finish this fight and then run away. can't believe like all of those have increased costs it's, it's going to be relatively likely that things we get have increased costs but that's not going to mean that i'm not sad about it <laughs> uh... So I'm going down this line exclusively looking for a Sunder in the next position that's available. Here's the awful one working perfectly, by the way. It won't always do this. I am going to keep an eye on how it performs over the rest of this run to reevaluate. Oh god, I had one more energy then, I thought. Sorry. 
Uh, I'm going to keep an eye on it over the rest of this run to reevaluate my opinion on it. I would be surprised if my opinion changed significantly, but I'm open to that. I can't. I cannot. This will kill me. Thunder Strike doesn't fit. We don't have Apotheosis. Or rather, we don't have the ability to buy Apotheosis. It's going to be card removal. Oh, no. Is it fair in a bottle? The argument for fairy in a bottle here is that this run, because it has Sunder, and because Sunder and Meteor Strike are so strong with Sneko Eye, all we need to do is live long enough and get those cards. Fairy in a bottle obviously assists with that. I'll obviously take the cheaper one, but I think I think that was yeah. I think it had to be that. Real bad there. That's not what I intended to click. I was trying to click my deck again. All for one severely overperforming just to embarrass me. I see your game, all for one. Mm -mm. Can't take any of those. We'll take the max HP. Four more damage on all for one. Actually, the second hologram needs to be upgraded because it brings back the all for one and the all for one does other stuff. All for one still fits in this deck. Oh, how many elites can I go for? Two or just the one? Just the one. Just the one. Keep it safe. Keep it secret. Keep it safe. Damage that turn. Uh, I was looking for a defense this turn. All right. We have the ability to kill. We don't have boot. We don't have anything else that's going to supplement our damage. So we can play what? Rebound, Strike, Cold Snap, Claw. Okay. So if we can play Rebound, Strike, Cold Snap, Claw. We play Rebound first, then we play Claw. Claw removes the malleability, so enemy has 10 HP left. Then we play Strike. Then we play Cold Snap, and we don't win. We have to use the Zero Potion if we want to win this turn. Self-Repair versus Cool-Headed. Can't take Cool-Headed. Cool-Headed is positive card draw by one. If you don't understand what I mean when I say card positive and card negative, I will go over it now. When you draw a card, like Cool Headed, and it says draw one card on it, if you didn't have Cool Headed in your deck, you would have just drawn the card that Cool Headed would have drawn. It has no card positive effect. A card that gives you a card is card neutral. It can be described as a cantrip when it's zero cost. Now, zero cost would mean it's zero energy cost, as well as zero card cost, which means card neutral. Cool-headed only becomes card positive when you upgrade it. That is to say, it draws two cards. But, is that valuable in a build that has Sneko Eye? Would I cast a cool-headed that costs two? No. No, never. Would I cast a cool-headed that costs three? You're laughing, you're joking, that's hilarious, please. Stop, my sides are splitting. I only mentioned that because I've had poor experiences with explaining that recently. 
It's like a sapphire key there over the bronze scales. I'm aware of the fact that the bronze scales can do a ridiculous amount of things in the final combat. Well aware of that fact. Wow. See, this is what I'm talking about. None of these are zero costs. Suddenly, all for one does nothing. It's not reliable. Oh no, we got double confused. I have to try and harder than that. I'm already as confused as I can be. I feel like for the sake of my damage output, I have to use Sunder that turn. Just because I'm worried about how much damage I'll take if I don't. By prolonging the fight. Mm -mm. Please give me some higher cost cards. I, I literally banked on it. Literally. No, not literally. <laughs> I am, however, banking on it. Some zero cost cards here. Got two. That was the wrong way to go about that turn, obviously, but. Go for the eyes, weakens. Weaken on 18 is a reduction of four damage. Four damage off of that is. Uh, it's 14, 14 coming in against 12 versus defending this turn and going up to 9, 17. So I take two damage or one damage. Whoa, that took five damage off of you? Okay, so I took one damage and I removed a plated armor. Okay, so it's, it's rounding in my favor now. I did not think that's how that worked currently. Gosh, I really need like a meteor strike or something like that. Bail me out. Yikes. Double energy is a problem for this build. Reason it's a problem for this build is double energy doubles the energy after you pay, uh, pay the card cost of double energy. Uh, by the way, this is the same reason that in the modded series, double energy with xylophone won't work, or at least. I don't think it will. Obviously, I haven't tried it. But X cost cards spend all of your energy at cast. And then it would be doubling zero as many times as you'd spent energy on it. But it removes your energy first. So double energy is not necessarily going to be an energy gain card unless it's zero or one for us. And if it is one, it's going to gain us one energy. Yeah. If we survive this fight, I'm frankly, I, if we survive this fight, I am worried about the balance of this enemy. That's, that's, that's what I'll say. We should not survive this fight. I'd love to play another Sunder in order to start dealing the damage, but... I'd also like to not die. Mm -hmm. Two zero cost cards. All for one them back and then play them again. And the most effective thing I can do that turn. Hmm. Hologram back. I do. All for one's actually more costly than I thought it was. The problem with multi hits is that we get revived to 10% of our max HP, so 8. So if another multi-hit happens to land and kills us, we still just dead. 
Mm -hmm. Got one HP left. So we revived with eight and then took the extra seven and Sunder. Give me expensive. I'll take a glacier. I, I will even call it its actual name. That's how much I am happy to have that. And with not having uh, the kind of card that we need in this, we will lose. Uh, Chrysalis is not going to work, at least. I don't believe it will. I haven't used the interaction, but it stands to reason that on draw, the sh skills will still reshuffle their cost. Uh, because Snake Away is whenever you draw a card, randomize its cost. I'm going to remove Claw. Go for the eyes from the deck because it's very difficult to play that. Yes, we immediately use the more bank. Kind of got her. We have a lot of attack cards in the deck, don't we? Oh, not that many. We do have a lot. Impatience is obviously really difficult to take here. I'm taking two steroid potions. If Basically, I think I might need them to blow up an enemy and never mind. I'm going to keep that hologram. Basically, I'm looking for a hand that's all zero cost cards as well as all for one. There is... You're going to have to take my word on this. There is no combination of these cards that will defend me in any way against the 20 incoming damage. Or rather in any significant way. Let's do the absolute best defensive option I have available to me. And then end the episode. My name is Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Slay the Spy of the Heartbreaker Chronicles. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. And hopefully we'll see you next time.